All right, it's time to take a look at some Batmobiles. I saw three recently, and I'd like to tell you what it was like to see them in person. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people like me that would cherish an opportunity like this. I've wanted to see any Batmobile since I was a kid. I got my opportunity recently at a custom auto show in Boston. They advertised three generations of Batmobiles, and not just replicas, but actual ones from the movies and the Adam West television series. It was the best of both worlds, getting to see in person what I love about the movies now and back 20 years ago when I was a kid busting open Batman toys on my birthday. As far as the selection goes of what three Batmobiles to see, this couldn't be any better. These are the ones I would have chose easily. I grew up with Michael Keaton as my Batman, and the Tim Burton Batmobile is my favorite. This would have been my first selection. Second would be the 1966 Batmobile. I remember seeing the movie as a kid, as well as the TV series and reruns in the early 90s, making this one as much a part of my childhood as anyone that was alive during the 1960s. And my third selection would be the Tumbler from the Chris Nolan Christian Bale movies. As a purely functional Batmobile, this is by far the best, with the ability to perform most of what you saw in the movies. A fine selection and probably the most fun of any of them to drive. I would finally get my chance to view all three at the World of Wheels Custom Auto Show in Boston. This was my first year visiting the show, and there was a lot to see as far as the transportation goes. Cars, trucks, motorcycles, all things you can ride and drive, filling up the space at the Seaport World Trade Center. But who was I kidding? The General Lee and everything else would have to wait. I was there to see some Batmobiles. The suspense built as I walked all the way to the back of the auto show to find the tribute to the Batmobile. And there I would come within inches of what I thought was three screen used cars like I saw advertised online. But after hanging around for a while taking pictures and recording video, eventually I was told by someone there that the Tumblr was actually fan made. And I thought okay, with the Tumblr it was advertised only as featured in Batman Begins. This is my own fault for just assuming it would be an actual one used in the movie. But what about the other two? The advertisement said the 1966 Teen Jeffries Batmobile featured in the TV series Batman. Not a replica car. The actual 1989 Batmobile movie car from Batman Returns. And this was the only ad I could find regarding the Batmobiles on tour. To get a closer look I paid the extra 10 bucks to get a picture taken with one of the cars. The first one I came to was the 1966 Batmobile. When I heard a non-replica car of this was going to be at the show, I was impressed. The original built off the Lincoln Futura recently sold an auction for $4.2 million. It was used in a lot of the close-up shots, featuring the actors. From this car, three molds were used to build fiberglass replicas. Some were used as stunt cars on the show and also would tour the country for the fans to see. The number four car was also used in the 1960s at local drag strips throughout the U.S. With only four in the world, these cars can fetch top dollar, so to have one at the show would be a really big deal. However, the one I saw wasn't any of the ones used on television. This one is smaller and not as detailed in the body. The rear of the car doesn't match up with any of the originals either. Same for the interior. There's a lot of labels, buttons, and switches missing inside. Turns out there's a website licensed by DC to build reproductions called Fiberglass Freaks. I was able to match the Detectoscope with one of their products online. Clearly not an original, but still a nice Batmobile in its own right. Next up was the Tumblr, featured in the 2005 film Batman Begins. Now I already knew this one was a replica, and honestly I didn't mind. Obviously I wish it was screen used, but the fan did a hell of a job on this one, bringing to life what he obviously loved about the new Batmobile, which is basically a cross between a Lamborghini and a tank. It certainly looks close, and seeing the guy dressed up as Christian Bale next to it will make you do a double take. That just leaves the Batmobile used in the Tim Burton movies. I wanted this one to be real more than the others. This is my favorite Batmobile, and the one I used to push around the house when I was a kid. Today, it can be hard to track down photos of an actual Batman Returns Batmobile. Not many have been for sale. However, recently one was in auction on eBay, and pictures were posted online of the interior and the current state of the car. When matching those photos with the one I saw, I began to notice subtle differences like the front headlights weren't a match and the interior was also a more stripped down version with a different color knob on the shift and also a lot of missing buttons and switches on the center consoles. But much like the other two Batmobiles, this is a really nicely done reproduction with a lot of the details done right, especially on the body. It was somewhat of a disappointment to find out the Batmobiles were replicas. I'm not sure if only some cities got movie used cars or if there was just some kind of mix up in the advertising. At the minimum, it could have stated more clearly that these were going to be reproductions. 
I still would have came to the show and checked it out because it was a good experience to see three generations of Batmobiles represented in one place. The nostalgia was high for me as it would be for anyone who grew up with one of these cars as their Batmobile. Getting to see one in person is rare, let alone three, real or replicas. However, the experience just makes me want to see a real one that much more.